Pastor Benny Hinn invites you to join over 3 million Facebook users around the world who like Benny Hinn Ministries. Go to the ministry website and click the Facebook link. And if you follow Pastor Benny, you'll receive alerts when he is broadcasting live. Don't miss this opportunity to receive inspiring messages, scriptures, teachings, announcements, and Pastor Benny's live teachings on Facebook. Like and follow Benny Hinn Ministries today. understand that nothing happens with God without having dinner with him. I repeat, nothing happens with God till we have dinner with him. Every promise in the Bible is activated during a meal. Example, God gave Abraham the promise that he would be the father of nations. In Genesis 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. No, no, don't write anything. Just listen to me. He had to wait 25 years till one day God shows up and has lunch with him. In Genesis 18. And then he said, Isaac will come a year from now. So all the promises were ignited through lunch. (laughs) Communion is dinner with God. We've lost the meaning of communion. Let me give you another one. Abimelech, the king of Gerar, has a problem with Isaac. In Genesis 26, he comes back and says, now let's make an agreement, let's make a covenant. But the covenant was not ratified till they ate together. It says they ate together. Why? Because eating ignites the covenant. Then we see something else in the Bible. We see Jacob and Laban. Laban comes after Jacob when he left Laban's house. This is Genesis 31, by the way. And, they, and he's angry why he left, and he took his children, blah, 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 blah. And then they got, get into a little argument, and then they make an agreement, and they eat together. Why? Ignites the covenant. What did Jesus do before the cross? Have dinner. They had a meal. What did Jesus do after the resurrection? He had a meal. To ignite the covenant he just made. So Jesus has a meal before the cross and has a meal after the cross. When he showed up in the upper room, the first thing he says, do you have food here? He did not even say something like, mighty like I am that I am or, you know. All all he said is, where is food? What does it say in Acts 10.41? Peter says that they, they had dinner with him often. They ate and drank with him often. Why? Because when you eat with God, you ignite the promise. We lost the power of communion because we don't do it properly. Jesus said, this is my body. He didn't say symbolic of my body. This is my blood. So we Pentecostals, we Charismatics, we who believe in the Spirit of God, believe that it's his body in spirit. It's his blood in spirit. It's not symbolic. Oh, I got your attention now. (laughs) Now, sickness and disease are not from God because the Bible says in Acts 10, 38, Jesus went about doing good, healing all oppressed of the devil. So Jesus is in the healing business, not in the sickness business. Jesus came to calm the storm, not to cause the storm. 
So now you have to understand that disease is evil. Disease did not come from the Lord. Disease is the result of the fall of Adam. And we also must understand that Jesus is the will of God, the work of God, the action of God in human form. So if you want to know what God is like, look at what Jesus did. He did not have to say it. Just by doing it, he was saying it. So when Jesus healed the sick, then we know it's God's will to heal the sick because he did. So Jesus Christ is the will of God in action. He is the work of God in action. He is God in human form and action. Healing came. The Bible makes it clear. When the cross is understood. So 2 Corinthians, I won't be long, but you need to hear this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10 and 11, we read something very, very powerful. It says this, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. When we identify with the cross, then our body will see the results. So, Let's understand that sin is the cause of disease. That doesn't mean every time you sin, there'll be sickness. I mean it came from the fall of man. When Adam fell, the result was death and disease. We're still having it now because of the fall of man. But let's also understand there is a promise, and the promise of God is quite simple, that through the cross we are forgiven and healed. And the word of God says that once you begin to identify with the work of the cross, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Now, we have to understand that whenever the cross was revealed, healing came. The first time the cross was revealed in the Bible was Exodus 12. In Exodus 12, they made the sign of the cross by applying the blood on their doorposts and on the lintel which is on top and ate the lamb. So they had communion in the old covenant. How? They ate the lamb, applied the blood on their homes. And the result was what? All were healed. They came out of Egypt, a healed, healthy people because of having dinner with God. The next time we see miracles in the Old Covenant is found in Numbers chapter 16, verse 46 through verse 50. When the atonement was made. Now you all remember what happened, of course. Where... Korah came against Moses. 250 were killed because of his rebellion. The whole nation now rises against Moses. And a plague starts in the camp. And Moses says, run through the camp with the atonement, meaning with the blood. Meaning bring the cross into the camp. And when the cross, meaning the work of the cross... Because it says they made an atonement. The, the, the minute the blood was applied, the minute the cross was revealed, it says the plague stopped. And by that time, 14,700 people had been killed. The plague began and they ran through the crowd and stopped it with the work of Calvary. Now think about this, that that was only a shadow. In the old covenant, Exodus 12, a shadow. Numbers 16, a shadow. Numbers 21, a shadow. What was Numbers 21? When, when, when they began to murmur and so forth, snakes came and bit them. Many people died and God said, okay, now put a pole and put a brazen snake on it. Symbolic of the work of Calvary. Because Jesus became our sin, if you remember. 
and the, and the serpent is symbolic of sin. So when Jesus said to Nicodemus, as Moses lifted up the serpent, meaning I will also be lifted and be sin for the world. As Moses lifted up the serpent, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. Meaning that the cross, the work of Calvary, and God said to Moses, whoever looks will be healed. So when you look to the cross, you'll be healed. That was a type. Now here's what I want to say. If the type can heal, how much more the substance? They had the type. They had the shadow. We have the real thing. If they were all healed by a shadow, why are we not healed when we have the very substance of the shadow? A shadow is a shadow. There's my shadow in the lights. That's all they had, the shadow, all the types and shadows. We have the real thing. They were all healed. Exodus 12, Numbers 16, Numbers 21. David saw the cross when he said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all within me bless his name, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your sickness. Why? Your sickness, because he saw the work of Calvary. Isaiah saw the work of Calvary and cried, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for iniquity, chastised us for peace. With his stripes were healed. Now, we people don't understand the power of those words. But, but, but I want to I wanna say something here. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to get back to what Isaiah said. Forgiveness and healings are twins. Forgiveness and healing are twins. Whenever God forgives, he always heals. Always. Because the psalm says he forgives you and heals you. Now, why is it that we are willing to accept the message of salvation, but we fight the message of healing? Here's why. Because we know that we cannot be saved any other way but through accepting Jesus as Savior. So nobody will fight you on this because they know there's only one way to heaven. His name is Jesus. But why do we fight healing? Because we know there are other means to get it. If God doesn't heal me, I'll go see a doctor. I'll go take medication. I'll go for help here and there. Well, that's when you lose the blessings of God too. So the world and many in the church will not accept the message of healing because there's other ways to receive it. But no blessings attached to it whatsoever. Yet God offers forgiveness and healing together. He said to the men in Matthew 9, 6, your sin is forgiven, get up and walk. In James 5, any sick among you, come to the elders, anoint you with oil, and any sin will be forgiven altogether. Why? Because they're twins. Sin and disease are twins too. Now, we have to understand what Isaiah said. So let's go back to Isaiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to read Isaiah 53, verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs. Now, that word griefs is found a hundred times in the Old Covenant. It's the Hebrew word choli, means infirmity, sickness. That's what the word means. So when you read, surely he hath borne our sorrows, that word griefs, surely hath, he hath borne our griefs, that word griefs is sickness in Hebrew. Surely he hath borne our sickness, because it's the word choli. And choli, I repeat, means infirmities, sickness. Surely, surely, surely he hath borne. Surely he took upon himself. The word born is amasa, means to carry away, to bear it. Surely he hath borne or has carried. Another Translation says, take away. Like in John 1, 29, he, he came to take away. God came to take away your disease. If he came to take away, what are you doing keeping it? 
He came to bear, to carry our disease. Surely, surely, and I love that word surely. Surely means of a fact, of a truth. It's a vow. That word surely in the Hebrew says oath. Think about God making a vow when he says surely he hath borne or carried our holy, our disease, our sickness. And our sorrows. So it's not about relief, it's about substitution. Do you not understand that when you get saved, you give your heart to God, and when you get healed, you have to give him your body? The reason many are not healed, they won't give him their body. Because he can only fix what you give him. That's it. Now, Isaiah 53 and verse 10. Well, let me just keep, keep reading. It says, Surely he hath borne our griefs, holy care, our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded. Wounded. The Hebrew word, he was pierced for transgressions. The word bruised means crushed in Hebrew. Crushed for our iniquities. And then it says he was chastised or he was punished is the Hebrew word for our peace. So transgressions are the actual sins. Iniquities is the state of the heart of sin. And punishment means deliverance from the curse. I want to repeat that because you missed it. He was wounded, wounded, and the word means pierced for our transgressions. A transgression is the act of sin. He was bruised or better crushed for our iniquities, which are the state of sin. One is the act, one is the state. One is the act, one, one is the reason for the act. And he was punished or chastised for our peace. Now, if you put why the peace, because the curse brought the torment. The curse brought no peace. So Jesus was punished to break the curse. Now, the Bible says in verse 10, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Wow. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. Why would it say that? It pleased the Lord to make him sick? And that's confirmed in Matthew 8, 17. Because many will argue, well, it has nothing to do with healing. Wait, wait, hold, hold. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, chastised for peace. And then verse 10 says it pleased the Lord to actually bruise him. And then you read Matthew 8. And, and what does he say in there? He says, when the even was come, they came and were all healed. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. That's Matthew 8, 16, 17. That it might be fulfilled by the prophet Isaiah, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. Now we know that what is spoken in Isaiah makes it quite positive in Matthew. It was referring to the body alone. He was wounded for transgressions, bruised for iniquities, chastised for peace. Has to do with our salvation, absolutely. But with his stripes we are healed. So now Jesus is healing all the sick that it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by Isaiah, which I just read. Because what was Jesus doing? Healing them all. It confirms then it dealt with the body. So he healed the people is what Matthew says. The reason Jesus healed the people is because Isaiah said he would. Now, by his wounds we are healed. It means, to, it means that, that that's additional to spiritual redemption. It means the redemption of the body also. Yeah, surely, surely. Why did he say surely? Because he was saying 
truth, the truth, the truth. It's an oath. God was putting his oath on it. And may I also say something? The word sorrow in Hebrew means pain. Surely he hath borne our sorrow, our pain. Not, not only grief, not only holy, but pain. So God didn't only come to receive our sickness. He came to take the pain that comes with it. He was wounded for our transgressions. Think about that, saints. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was chastised to bring us peace, to bring us joy and fulfillment. And with his stripes were healed. And I know we know that promise because we hear it and know what the Bible says. But I just want you to think about the fact that Jesus was wounded. In his heart he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised or crushed is the word, the Hebrew word, crushed for our iniquities. Chastised that the curse might be broken and we can have peace with his stripes were healed. Only Jesus can do that. And only Jesus did that for you because he loves you. So no matter what the disease is, what the doctors have said, as difficult as it is, I just want you to look up. Remember what God said to Moses, whoever looks will live. I just want you to look up and see Jesus, see his love, see the power of the blood, that will make you whole. And as we pray now, we are going to come into agreement that God will do just what he promised because it says we're healed. I'm seeing more people healed of cancer now in our meetings here at the studio and elsewhere. In Chicago, so many people with tumors were healed. God wants to heal you of whatever disease. Now, I'm going to stretch my hands towards you. Now, you stretch your hands towards me. Or come put your hands on the screen and let's just believe God together. In the name of Jesus, we come in agreement. Let your mighty power flow, Lord. Let your mighty power flow through that body. Heal, Lord, and deliver that one calling on your holy name, Jesus. I rebuke that sickness. I rebuke that bondage. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity behind it in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed, be healed, be healed in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen and amen. Now you keep watching the program, let your faith build. Believe God to heal you and trust him that your miracle will become a reality in your life and body. Thank you for watching now. Stay in tune, and I'll see you again. Recently, Steve Muncy was on This Is Your Day with Pastor Benny Hinn, and he explained that this is the time for you to recover everything you've lost or the devil has stolen. Right now you're watching me, and this program has been going on, and this is what rises up in my spirit just for you only for you that are watching me, you, just you. Something has been stolen from you. I mean, something has been ripped off. Your children may be on drugs or have been separated. The breakdown in your marriage or your job or something that you had, there's loss. I just hear the word loss. I hear the word loss. You remember this time when Samuel, Samuel, when he was gonna prophesy over Saul, but Saul went out to find his daddy's donkeys and his servant was with him and they finally gave up and said, we can't find our loss. And the servant said, there's a seer. If we go see the seer, if we go see the prophet, if we turn on the ministry, maybe he can give us a word. The Bible said that Saul said, but we don't have any offering to give him. And the servant said, oh yeah, I got a little shackle here. If we give it to the seer or the prophet, he will then know that we have respect and honor and what we honor will come to us. And the Bible said they discovered their loss. The prophet Samuel spoke to them in prophecy and said, you will find what you lost because they honored and gave to the man of God.
The Bible said that Job lost everything. I'm talking to someone. And, and I, I want to say this real quick, just for a moment here, because the Spirit of the Lord is about to do something. You are about to recover. You are about to get back what the enemy has stolen amen, from you. Amen, amen, amen. The Bible said Job lost everything that he had, and he lost it probably in the three to ten minutes. And this is only a minute and a half what I'm going to give you because I believe this is just for you. The Bible said he lost everything. He lost his children. They died. He lost everything. Now, you, maybe you haven't lost as much as Job had, but you've lost something. And God connected with Pastor Hen today. And I want to tell you that I sense in my spirit that Amen. God is going to give you back what you lost. And can I use my faith with Pastor together? We're going to believe in just a moment. Amen. You're going to get back double. Amen. The Bible says that Job put seven rams and put seven bullocks on the altar. When he put that offering on the altar, God stood up, pointed his finger at the devil, and said, you give him back double everything you've stolen from him. I sense something rising up right now. I sense you going to your phone at this very moment and saying, I'm going to put a $77 offering up on the altar. The moment you put that offering through the phone line or through the computer or ever how you can get it in the next few moments, I believe in my spirit. God's going to rise up and say, Satan, what you have stolen from them and their children, their health, their money, you're going to have to give it back. I want you to go to the phone. And even after we go off the air, I want you to get on the phone and say, you know what? I'm going to find my loss. I'm going to get back what the devil has stolen from me. And I'm going to tell you right now, i got five seconds. I'm going to tell you what the devil is saying. Whatever you do, don't listen to him. Turn your television. Get, turn another channel quickly. Because Satan knows that when you give the offering, it gives God the right to put a weapon in his hand to destroy and to rebuke the devourer that has come against you. In the name of Jesus, I declare it. I Amen. feel it. I sense it. You have watched me. You are the person. And in Jesus' name, go to the phone now. We, as we go off the air, get to that phone because you are about to get back what you lost, $77. Go to the phone now. Pray, pray with them quick. Father, I thank you Amen, for this Lord. moment. I Amen. believe, Lord God, that, that who I am speaking to, this is no coincidence on Pastor Hen's program today, but God, right now, you're speaking to them. And I sense this urgency, Lord, as Job gave seven rams and seven bullocks. God, when he put that on the altar, when they call and they put that on the altar of this ministry, Lord, I believe the same thing that happened to Job is going to happen to them. And in the name of Jesus, as they go to the phone, oh, in Jesus' name, you, I see you. I sense in my spirit your children are coming back. God is going to break that stuff off of your life. There's an inheritance. Something double is going to happen to your health. Go to the phone. And even after we go off the air, we will be here to receive your offering of $77. Go now, because this is a moment in which God is about to do something incredible in your life.